Hi, my name is Ian Connor. I am the Colorado National Guard Sexual Assault Response Coordinator. Ms. Sarah White Knight. I am the Suicide Prevention Coordinator for the Colorado Army National Guard. Today, we're actually going to talk with uh, Sarah. She's going to share our, her story uh, of how she is a survivor of sexual assault. So, um, I enlisted in the National Guard when I was 17 in 2006, and I served until 2017. And so part of my time was spent uh, on the enlisted side, and then I also commissioned through ROTC. In 2009, while I was preparing for my junior year of college, I attended a party with several cadets. It was one of the first times I had attempted to be social and interact in that kind of setting. And there was a lot of alcohol drunk that night. So trying to be responsible, I decided to stay at the house that I was, uh, the party was at. And... In turn, during that night, I woke up being sexually assaulted by another cadet, someone I served with, and someone that I thought I could trust. After um, struggling with trying to figure out if I should report, um, it took me about six months to come up with the courage to actually come forward. And throughout the course of that, I'm sorry, <laughs> throughout the course of that investigation, they were unable to find evidence. And so it was kind of closed and there wasn't really any conclusion to it. So I moved on with my life. I commissioned and went on to do good things in my terms of service, but I struggled a lot. Um, I struggled with thoughts of suicide myself. I struggled with depression and anxiety and uh, that feeling of safety around the people I was serving with. And so after struggling through that and realizing as a leader, you have to be willing to take care of yourself. I came forward again to the SARC office because I wanted to get help. I wanted to get some counseling and work through the feelings and emotions that I was going through. And over the course of that, we found out that my unrestricted report and all of the documents associated with it had been either lost or misplaced. And so I had to refile, which in itself was very triggering. Yes. It was like going through it all over again and having to, again, try and remember details. I can't tell you the date that this happened. I can't tell you the names of everyone that was at this party. But I can remember my uh, feelings of violation of his hands touching me and doing things that he shouldn't. I can remember that feeling of wanting to crawl out of my skin and feeling like no one could possibly understand what I'm going through. But working with the SARC program again and coming to the understanding that, you know, we can get through hard things and there are resources available when you need them. It's, it's a difficult process, and it's definitely one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. But for me, a lot of what my healing came from was taking what I do in my job with suicide prevention and helping others when they're going through hard times and knowing that, yes, you may be in this dark place right now. You may be dealing with some incredibly hard trauma or just hard life experiences, but you can get through it. There's a light on the other side. With April being Sexual Assault and Prevention Awareness Month, we need to remember that it's not just in April. It's all year round. And it's up to each of us to do the right thing. If we see something or hear something, come forward. If you're struggling with something that may have happened to you, please reach out for help. There are a lot of resources, both within the sexual assault and harassment program, as well as within the suicide prevention program. And there are a lot of people who care. Just remember, uh, survivors of sexual assault have an increased risk for suicidal ideation. And this here, we want to bring attention to. Um, we are here to help. We are here to do uh, what we can. And we are here to advocate for your rights as a survivor of sexual assault and sexual harassment.